Hi, I'm meteorologist Chris Tomer. Let's talk mountain weather and ski conditions. And first of all, I want to start out with a look at the snowpack across the West in general. And uh, notice most areas need more snow. It, it has been tough. The uh, slow start to the season has really drugged, dragged on and drugged the snowpack down. And we've suffered with most of Utah and Colorado running 60, 70, maybe 80 percent of normal, um, except for extreme southern Colorado around Wolf Creek. Um, and you look up into Wyoming, southern Wyoming needs more snow, although Jackson Hole North is doing very well. So is the northern part of Idaho and most of Montana. The Pacific Northwest is on track. But what we really need is a significant uh, series of storm systems to come through the heart of the Intermountain West and really lay down some heavy snow. So let's get into the analysis here, and I'll tell you what I'm seeing as far as this goes. So radar satellite, what we're seeing right here is really just a transition to the main pattern that will dominate the weekend. Notice it's mainly a southwesterly type of wind flow here that's coming off the Pacific and into the west. This is, um, this is okay. This is nothing significant, but it will lay, lay down some new snow through parts of Utah and into western and southwest Colorado, but this is not the be-all, end-all. Again, this is mainly just a transitory pattern to kind of get us to the next phase. And if we look out into the Pacific, you can see it coming. This is going to be the first of two storms that affect us this upcoming weekend, which will be more significant. I'm seeing that comet shape. See it out way over in the Pacific? That line of clouds and that spin is what will be working its way into the, uh, the west and eventually the Intermountain West by the time we get to this weekend. And then there's even another storm behind that, which will be significant as well and drag some Arctic air down across uh, the Intermountain West and then eventually into the heartland. But as we move through time here on the future radar, notice the snow continues in western and southwest Colorado on Wednesday morning. There might be some light additional snows coming out of uh, the Wasatch there. But again, we're not looking at anything huge there. Um, we, we, we might be able to squeeze out four to eight inches, maybe a pocket of heavier snow there in some places across western and southwest Colorado. But by and large, that moves away. Then we sort of refocus. And what you see to the north happening here is part of an Arctic boundary that's going to kind of set up through the northern tier of states. And we'll start to snow. But again, really the action comes in as we kind of move into the end of the week and then into the weekend. Watch as we transition out of Thursday and into Friday here on the future radar. We'll start to notice some activity hit the west coast. Look at that. And then the whole thing begins to move in. Now, this is where it starts to get exciting. Um, it starts to, there's a joining or a meshing of the west coast low and the Arctic boundary that's dropping down through Big Sky and into Jackson. And what will happen is this is going to load up the Wasatch. It'll load up the Tetons, and it will start to load up the central and northern mountains of Colorado with some snowfall as the two sort of mesh. So this is Friday at 515. Even the Sierra will be getting snow, and so will the Pacific Northwest. But look what happens here on Saturday. The whole thing gels and moves through Salt Lake, the Wasatch, the Tetons, and into Colorado. There will be some significant snow totals, as I'll show you. I've got two snow plumes to show you as worst-case scenarios. But look to the Pacific Northwest. So that is that second storm system I was talking about. That will also move in during the weekend and start to affect uh, the Wasatch, the Tetons in Colorado with colder air and more significant snowfall. So this is a lot, there's a lot here. Um, this is good. We have sort of a, a parade of storms lined up as we head into the weekend. So if we start looking at snowfall accumulation, um, again, mainly in the, uh, the first part of this, what we're looking at is just some snowfall through parts of Colorado. It does not look like it's going to be anything huge. This is by tomorrow. Wednesday morning, you're looking at three, four, five, six inches. Crested Butte, Steamboat appear to be uh, the two areas to watch. If you're going to be skiing on Wednesday, I'd shoot for those locations. But again, that's a southwest flow. The temperatures in the atmosphere are not nearly as cold with that as we, we saw with the northwest flow pattern last weekend. So the, by Thursday morning, we haven't really added a whole lot to the mix. I think the real exciting stuff starts to move in like on Friday. On Friday into Saturday, we'll start to see things increase. Notice in Colorado, we've started to add a little bit more up around Steamboat Jackson Hole's total is starting to go up, and we're starting to see a little bit of snow across the Sierra. 
Now between Friday and Saturday, this is where I start, this is where I think we'll start to see some of the bigger totals. Look at the magenta color around Jackson Hole, Grand Targhee, the Tetons. Look at Steamboat, for example. And even the numbers in the Wasatch have started to come up as well. But again, if you're looking at locations, I would key in on Steamboat for Saturday morning. I would look at the Tetons up there around Jackson Hole and up around Grand Targhee. And even between Friday and Saturday, I would definitely start to look at the Wasatch. I think these are these are probably low to conservative, these estimates, and most and probably falling into the most likely category and others, but these are not extreme cases. I'll show you the extreme cases coming up, and even the Pacific Northwest has tallied up some nice totals. Now let me show you what the extreme cases. If we can push the storm timing into Friday and Saturday, and, um, and keep in mind there's a storm behind that as well, but if, if all that comes together, and then the ratios are going to start to shoot the totals up higher. So between Friday and Saturday, look at Alta Snow Plume. I think it's possible that we could push that up to about 20 inches. It's possible that you could have a 20-inch snow event and have a big powder Saturday uh, across Alta and Snowbird. And then the totals would go up again as we started to work our way Saturday night, Sunday, and Monday. As that second storm comes in, we could push the plume up even more. So that's Alta, that's Snowbird, the Wasatch. Let's look at Jackson Hole. It's somewhat similar. Notice the scale is much more is much more uh, significant off to the left. I've, I've got a 50 on the top right there. So between Thursday night, Friday, and Saturday, we could be looking at a big powder day on Saturday. I think it's possible, like Alta and Snowbird, that we could be looking at, on the extreme end of things, 20 inches by the time we get into Saturday morning, making for a big powder day. And then that second storm that's moving in from the Pacific Northwest, the totals start to go up again between Saturday afternoon, Saturday night, and Sunday, Monday. So there's a lot to look forward to. And in some cases, we could be looking at some pretty big powder days ahead. So, you know, staying, hang with me this week. I'll do some additional updates, see what the timing continues to look like for those two Pacific storms. And we'll just continue to hope for the best. Take care. Always appreciate you tuning in here.